chat about the principles and heuristics that you need to come up with in the define phase. Now remember, just like framing was in the preparation phase, the principles and heuristics is the next step of this because what you're trying to do in the preparation phase, you're using framing to come up with, well, what's the size of the opportunity? Whereas here in the define phase, you're using principles and heuristics to come up with your design brief. Uh, in other words, what's the extent of the um, problem area? So in other words, what are its boundaries? And then we're going to drop a how might we question in the middle of that. So really all we do here is we come up with a set of design principles. Um, and we build some design criteria, which we'll do in a, a canvas later. Um, and what we have to do in this exercise is, is um, just brainstorm them down on a piece of paper. Um, now, I'll give you a few tips along the way. Um, but what we want to do is the point of a principle is that it's a, it's something that reduces arguments around a particular point. So if we're continually debating something amongst the team, then you know that that is perfect soil for a um, principle. So that in the future, when you come across a similar incident, then you just refer back to the principle. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to encapsulate lessons learned in a series of principles. And you, know, you can build a principles database, which you can use for your entire organization or particular parts of your business. Okay. And then later on, you're going to build criteria to evaluate your prototypes um, and your concepts against these uh, design principles. So you have the principle, you have the criteria, then you have the results from your prototype testing. Now, um, you, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're clear on the types of principles that are available for your particular area. Right? So whatever your particular discipline, whether it's strategy, whether it's design, whether it's retail, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's logistics, sales, whatever the case might be, there are a set of heuristics and design principles that sit within that discipline. And we're really getting into a world where it's more about the principles that you know, understand, and then can apply in a flexible manner to different ideas and designs than necessarily the low level rules and things that you need to enforce and code in processes and those types of things. So really, I mean, I personally believe we're in this age of, of broader principles as opposed to this age of process and automation type of things. So what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to understand specifically for your challenges and your business areas. So, you know, you, 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 there are principles that are categorized in a certain ways. So, for example, principles that help you to understand how you can increase the appeal of your design. Principles that can help you understand or that can help you make better decisions in business. Uh, there are principles that, you know, can help you improve usability of your organization services and or products. There are principles that can help people learn and understand uh, things better and easier. Um, there are principles that you can use that help change people's perceptions on certain things. So be sure that you invest yourself in some of the time um, to you know, understand what principles apply to your area. And there's a book called The Universal Principles of Design, which um, is a good reference source for you to work with. And you don't have to learn, you know, all 262 um, principles in there, but um, it's definitely something that you can refer to each time you get to this phase. All right, so here's an example. So remember, the design principle is a statement of belief. Um, so what it's trying to do is it's trying to guide us in a particular direction so to avoid disagreement, so to speak. Um, and what we have here is an accessibility principle. So objects and environments should be designed to be usable without modification by as many people as possible. So really this is all about you know how we um, access a you know, door. You know, we spoke about the door situation around the push and pull um, areas with the conflict of the first order and second order. So the door has push written on it, but it's got a handle on it, which tells you a mental model that you must pull. So these are the types of things that would fit under this accessibility uh, principle. And then what you do is you ex you have also have heuristics. Um, these are based upon experience, all right, and, and normally give us a set of criteria. These are rules of thumb, so to speak. Um, so 
um, in the previous module we, we spoke about the different types of almost um, decision making spoke about induction abduction deduction those types of things so you know, often the rule in things like deduction are are the heuristics that we're trying to extract so the, the principle is really just a statement of belief but the heuristic is almost a rule so for example we know that there's a supply and demand um, heuristic so we know that there's a rule that says if price increases the sales will decrease if demand increases the price goes up those are what we refer to as heuristics uh, and so, sometimes in deduction thought patterns we will put the rule first and then we'll take cases and we'll map it against that so you know, uh, let's go back to the original example and that if the price increases sales will, will decrease there's your heuristic your rule and we can have a, a particular instance that occurs. We launched product A at high price, and therefore there's a result of this. So the rules apply to that launching of the product. And what's the result? Well, that proved the heuristic in the first place. Product A's sales were low. Okay. It's the same story here in this example. Right, there's a rule of thumb. You know, millions of users have color vision deficiencies. So when you're presenting PowerPoint, don't use don't use red and green. All right. So that's a physical human factor. All right, uh, there are also third order um, type of um, heuristics that we can work with. Um, this one is specifically psychological type heuristics. So the principle here, sorry, not heuristics, but the principle and here is a, a guide from the side rather than sage from the stage. Right. So this is really talking about, you know, a lecturer or an instructor not being this person that just sits up front. So rather come beside somebody. This is almost a, a parenting principle. It says when your kids reach a certain age, you'd rather walk beside them shoulder to shoulder as opposed to up front in an authoritarian way. So this is a same principle applies to teaching and educating. Another one there, incomplete disclosure of content stimulates questions. You don't have to tell people everything and write everything down, uh, especially in uh, classroom type environments. Is, is you really want to be able to get people stimulate their thinking so word things on the page in such a way and that's why you see a lot of design sort of slides you know that comes up with you know, a nice fancy picture of a man staring off into the distance with one word title across it and facilitates a conversation um, this one relates to um, societal um, human factors so this is a sustainability principle and this particular example was the um, council of Hamburg city council of Hamburg that basically banned all of reusable coffee pods, not reusable, the, the coffee pods that people used, recyclable coffee mug, um, cups, all of those things were taken out of the government offices to support the sustainability principle. This one's one of my favorite, a humanity principle, um, addressing the societal human factors. Remember the five factors of, um, the five human factors that we dealt with in chapter one. So in this particular case, you know, the, the, the insight showed that 100,000 marine creatures and one million seabirds die from plastic entanglement each year. And this particular company, uh, which made uh, beer and soft drinks and those types of things, built an edible container so that if their container ever found its way into the sea, well, the fish would, um, you know, number one, be able to eat it, and number two, clean up the ocean themselves. So, great sustainability principle. What you also want to do is as you are defining your principles, you also want to get a very clear understanding from your stakeholders around, well, how much change do they actually want? Because that change has to find its way into your principles. And ultimately, you know that it's going to find its way into goals and objectives as well, which by the way, also plug in here, as we've seen in the business motivation model, uh, module that I did with you. So, you know, to what level of change do they want? Incremental or uh, just small improvements? Uh, there's an evolutionary change that one can occur or a completely disruptive or revolutionary change. So this helps you, number one, frame the opportunity space, but now also it's going to help you frame um, the types of principles that you want to be able to create. And we've seen this, you know, in the desirability, viability, feasibility. As you're in the principal area, well, guess what? You're going to have to work out um, principles that relate to these three things. Um, so the viability, I mean, it can be principles there that you get from your goals and objectives, and they could be really improving, increasing volume and improving margin and those types of things. I mean, you can still define those things as principles, but it, would, you know, it wouldn't be necessarily an outcome goal. It would be like the profitability principle. 
business. We can't survive. A business cannot survive unless it makes a margin and invests that margin back in the business. That's the principle. The goal would be, oh, well, or the objective would be it would increase turnaround, or increase profitability by 5% by quarter four 2018. Okay, so you see the difference. And even things like the feasibility principle around how we deliver stuff. You know? um, there is the delivery burn rate principle, which really says only take on work uh, that is in alignment with the burn rate of your teams. In other words, how, what, how fast your team delivers. Um, because if you, you know, if you have this massive backlog, this huge sort of undertaking, you know, you actually demoralize your teams and their ability to deliver and, 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 and show progress. So it's a couple of those little things that would also sort of slot in there under those three lenses. And remember, you can get these principles from a variety of sources. Um, I have shown you how you can get it from the business motivation model. We've looked at critical success factors, the value model, those things. But you can also get it from things like business architecture because your capabilities and your services, they need to, sorry, they need to deliver um, outcomes for the business. And in, hidden in those outcomes, you can extract some reusable principles that you can work with. Yeah, for, uh, for instance, as an example, a you know, very rough one of the transport company, uh, specifically using the motivation model that we spoke about. And here you can see the difference between a goal versus an objective. All right, so remember your principles run down the middle here. They cut down the middle. So they are the things that you adhere to Right, and broken down into heuristics, which are rules, things that you adhere to as you're traveling on the path between your means to an end. So as I'm traveling between, as I'm using these strategies to achieve these goals, these tactics to achieve these objectives, I'm doing it on a road, and there are principles and heuristics that govern how I travel on that road. And that's where your principles fit in. Um, all right, I um, just wanted to touch on uh, the difference between value and valuable. I think I've mentioned that a few times. So remember there are value, there is, there is actually a value, valuable alignment principle, uh, which quite frankly most organizations should have, but sometimes it needs to be explicitly stated. And we refer to these as value drivers. In other words, how, what, how do we see value? How do they drive decisions in our organization? And this is the traditional viability type of value drivers. So, you know, productivity, resourcefulness, um, costs, revenue, assets, utilization, all of those types of things. This is what we would consider to be value to the business. And then there's the things that are valuable to users. Safety, security, reliability, shelter, peace of mind, happiness, inclusion. These are the other aspects that you'd need to design. This is why experience and service design is becoming so important. So it's now trying to map these things, which are the valuable bits, the parts that create value, um, to the parts that capture value, which is this bit here, which is normally related to the business, and you have to create an alignment between those two. Yeah. Uh, here's just an example of our transport company, uh, in which we have principles, and we have the heuristics associated to it. All right, so here we have a valuable principle, which is convenience. People achieve their goals without hindrances or delays. Um, and we have some heuristics, provide services or service touch points that are available at a time and place of the client's choice. So you can kind of see there, the heuristic is really just the rules and the underlying bits of this broader underlying principle, or overarching principle. All right, um, now I like to use this little um, canvas to break up my principles. And remember, for each of these principles, you must write some heuristics as well. So you've got to write, well, what are the rules that are associated to that? Now, Dr. Spock principle I've loved for many years, and it's uh, clearly not because I'm a Trekkie, but talks about the benefit of the many outweighs the benefit of the few. Um, and your aim here, by the way, is to help people, you know, is, is you want to almost do a phrase here, um, and specifically when you want to write a heuristic in line with the principle. So help people buy more clothes for work. Okay, so that's something that we actually want to write down here, perhaps as a design goal. Okay. Now readability, um, that's also a design principle that normally has to do with things like languages. You can see visibility, I've used in two areas of visibility principle. I mean, think of tradey clothing, the bright clothing that they have to wear. Think of danger signs. Think of big signs that show you where you must check in your luggage, where you must park your car. 
accessibility principles you can see as well in there you know this is all about doors and hatches and things for me to be able to access um, a building also would have to do with perhaps um, you can see I've got one under the functional attributes uh, access by handicapped people so that they can actually get in and there's a place for wheelchair access those types of things there's even things like a similarity principle which is a user perception so you want to you want to create mental groupings of things so that they they group together so I know that uh, they're all related in some way and in my mind because I know that they're related it's easy for me to understand in other words it reduces complexity well, there's visual things like the cathedral effect. Um, in other words, if you create high ceilings in an area, it actually allows for more creative, abstract thought. So you've got this cathedral effect, you know, taken from the tall buildings of the churches, which is really taking your mind to a high level to understand your purpose and meaning and create creation, those types of things. Um, you know, so that you can see there's a couple of principles there. You know, there's the nudge principle, which I thought, I thought was quite interesting. Um, who was it? Yeah, it was in Amsterdam, the Schiphol Airport. Um, they used the nudge principle uh, for the men's urinals, and they painted a little fly at a certain position on the urinal. And what it led to is men basically aiming for the fly. And to believe it or not, it reduced spillage in the public restrooms by 80%. So you can see how the nudge principle it altered behavior in some way by using one of those, one of those forms. So really, that's principles and heuristics. Um, Take this canvas and see if you can come up with a, a, a series of principles for your project and also break it down into the underlying bullet point heuristics of each of those principles. See you soon.